Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to Synchronicity Web TV. I am your host, Nadia Shaw, and this is your moment of synchronicity. Well, look, we have such a special treat today. I'm so excited. My dear friend, Achuta Bava Das. Now, let me tell you, he really is one of the best out there, and I don't say that lightly. I take very seriously this uh, task of not watching other astrologers because I don't want to accidentally uh, plagiarize somebody. <laughs> so I really try not to watch other astrologers, but Achuta is one of those people that uh, his videos are just so enlightening and so uniquely his own. And uh, he is, is he's probably one of the only astrologers I actually watch on YouTube from time to time, but he's just brilliant. He knows his stuff. You've seen him on my channel before. And very soon now, I'm so excited because he's going to be teaching with Synchronicity University, something that I'm sure he will bring a very unique perspective to, which is mystical Saturn. Saturn can be mystical, yes. Achuta, welcome. Thank you for being here. Oh, thanks, Nadia. That was so sweet. That just totally made my day. And, um, you know, the feeling is mutual. I've just, when I came on YouTube and I thought, I'm going to try to take my work to YouTube, whose work is, like, who's out there doing this? And doing a really classy job of it. And you were at the top of my list. I looked at what you were doing and tried to uh, emulate it without taking anything. And so I, I really deeply appreciate that. That is so beautiful. Thank you. I'm so glad that I could inspire you. It means so much to me because yours is the kind of work in astrology that we need more of, that we need to see more of, and that I'm some part of you sharing your light, I think is, is just thank you. Just thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to be teaching on mystical Saturn. Tell me about mystical Saturn, because a lot of people fear Saturn. They hate Saturn. I'm pretty mystically inclined. <laughs> so <laughs> I think I'll be very receptive to your class, and I'm looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. um, let me just let people know that right now we're recording this about, got about a week left into April. And if you sign up for the May speaker series before the end of April. So you've got about a week left. Uh, you can choose your tuition rate as low as just $5 a class. And that includes this amazing class on mystical Saturn from Achuta. So tell me about mystical Saturn. Yeah, well, I'm really excited to have the opportunity to talk about this subject. It's one that I've been really excited about for a little over a year now. I made this talk a year ago, and I've given it a couple of times. But um, every time that I give it, I sort of take the time to improve it, reflect upon it. And so I'm just really excited for where this iteration of the talk is at. I've got more chart examples. I mean, it's just been revamped. But the um, the the gist of this talk is that when I started studying Saturn across the ages, like what, how did ancient people in maybe the last 500 years BCE think about Saturn? And then how did they think about Saturn in the Roman empire? And of course, we're talking about Kronos into Saturn of the Greek and Roman gods. And, and how did Indian astrologers think about Saturn in, in their tradition? And, and then how did that change as we get into the medieval period, up to the Renaissance period, up to the modern period. And so as I read, what I realized was that um, although the advent of the, or the ex, um, discovery of the outer planets is probably one of the most important things that's happened in the history of astrology, that in some ways, um, Saturn starts getting, I don't want to say getting left out, but it, it, Saturn is in some ways get, gets lumped in with everything that astrology used to be. And now everything that astrology is now, and, and somehow Saturn becomes the placeholder for like old, worn out, traditional, stuck in the mud, conservative, you know, just kind of strict, like all of this kind of limiting. And, and I was so surprised to find that as I studied Saturn throughout the ages, that although those, those are elements of Saturn for sure, that we all know that there's actually this entirely different side to Saturn that's deeply mystical and um, I think has a place in in the soul's life, the life of the soul, which is a little bit different than, you know, our mundane concerns where we're saying, well, how is Saturn messing up my day or helping me today? But when we get down into the level of, you know, am I living a meaningful life? Am I, am I living, do I have meaningful relationships? that Saturn plays this just deeply important role and also an important role in helping us 
you could say, cultivate a spiritual lifestyle of some kind. And the more I understood about that, the more I was like, this, this is so exciting because I don't have to be, I don't, I have this multidimensional way of looking at Saturn that I didn't have before. And it makes my practice better. It makes it easier for me to talk to clients about Saturn. So it just really was a game changer for me. And I've been excited to share it with other people. It's so interesting that you bring that perspective because I remember studying a little bit of Marcello Ficino, who was a Renaissance uh, astrologer and Catholic priest. And he called Saturn the Christ principle. Mm -hmm. And he talked about how with Saturn, it's this notion of faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. That's what we see with Saturn, that Saturn says, okay, fine, you believe what you believe. Like Jupiter is like, if you believe it, that's it. That's what matters. <laughs> right. But with Saturn, it becomes, okay, what are you actually living? Are you actually demonstrating it? And that's just one perspective. I'm sure that you'll bring all kinds of perspectives in. Yeah. I mean, basically the the perspectives that I was the most used to hearing in, I would say just the modern training that I received, which is so rich. So I'm not meaning to like, you know, cast any shade, but hard work, task master, discipline, structure, restriction, limitation, conservative, resistant to change, the old order, authority, responsibility, maturity. And those qualities are definitely Saturn on a certain level. But um, what I think I discovered that was the biggest breakthrough that I had was in understanding through people like Ficino, by the way, too, was that Saturn was the planet most intimately associated. Um, you know, sometimes we think melancholy and we might think depression or just some kind of like, oh, that's like Eeyore, you know, or, or something like that. But melancholy is a temperament in the classical study of the humors. And even before the humors were sort of formalized, it, it like post Aristotle and stuff like that, like that melancholy was associated with artists, with mystics, with recluses, with scholars, with people who like to tuck themselves away in libraries, with dreamers, with all sorts of um, complex personalities who are in the world, but don't always feel like they're a part of it. And that part of it really helped me because I was born, admit it's my like my confessional moment. I was born with a Capricorn moon, right? And and what I really got used to was just blaming everything in my chart. Anything that was difficult about my personality or maybe any hard heartedness or hard headedness, I would just be like, oh, it's my Capricorn moon, or and just kind of make a joke about it. But doing the study, I started going like, no, wow, this is um this is really beautiful. There's this whole other side to being a child of Saturn, where however that may show up in your chart. Not surprisingly that this research commenced as Saturn, Saturn was going over my moon <laughs> by transit in Capricorn. So you made that emotional connection with Saturn. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, that can be very powerful. I think it's incredible how transits to our own charts with our own intention can make us better can make us understand those symbols better so that we can then turn around and serve others with that personal understanding that we gain by choosing to intentionally learn from a particular transit rather than mm -hmm. just curse it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. in fact, there's one of my favorite quotes that I discovered during this process was from James Hillman, who's, um, you, you know, I'm sure you know James Hillman, but he, for people who don't know, he's a um, depth psychologist who was sort of like a prodigy student of Carl Jung. And um, he actually was kind of a contemporaries with Liz Green, too, who's a, f a famous astrologer. And um, if you guys all ha haven't read Liz's book on Saturn, too, so that's a great book on Saturn. She, she wrote it called Saturn, A New Look at an Old Devil or something like that. Yep, exactly. But Hillman had this quote, and it effectively it was like, when I was young, I used to curse Saturn. Uh, I would curse my stars and unknowingly would, would sort of curse Saturn. Um, and then he goes on to say that um, that as he's aged, the the things that he used to curse Saturn for, he he's come to realize are are blessings. And um, it goes on. It's a really eloquent quote that I can't fully recall, but it, it it's just so beautiful. And that was actually a part of it. In, in fact, one of the things that really woke me up to that quote was um, when Saturn was going over the the moon in my birth chart while I was doing all of this research. I also had some bouts of insomnia for a little while. And Hillman has a book that he wrote called The Force of Character. And in that book, he talks a lot about 
how Saturn speaks to us in sleepless nights and through insomnia um, as a way of waking us up to the reality of our our own death or mortality someday and and how paradoxically that can fill us with a lot more joy and meaning and um, contentment strangely and that's that's what was happening to me too I mean far from the Saturn transit being this awful heavy thing it, it was like um, a real deep dive and so I think that was that was that it couldn't, you know, it couldn't have come through if it weren't for the personal effect it was having on me. I love that you say that because actually this year I have several conjunctions, three conjunctions of Saturn over my son. And I have actually found this to be really good. Um, last year when Saturn just stepped into Aquarius, I felt a shift. I felt myself get more honest with myself about my life and, and you know, Saturn is sometimes associated with fear, but for me, it was more about um, no longer accepting that things should continue the way they are, like accepting the reality of a situation and not allowing one more day to go by um, in less than ideal or less than strong or less than authentic circumstances. So I've actually found this to be a really great transit. I mean, I, I feel a newfound uh, gratitude for my work Mm -hmm. I've seen how my work is, uh, has given me purpose and structure and blessings in my life, like real practical advantages and so much more like huge life decisions and changes have been taking place for me. So I love that you are bringing attention to the fact that even a Saturn conjunction to your son can be pretty amazing mm -hmm. if you let it. And if you, if you allow yourself to be open to that possibility. Now, I do want to say Saturn in my moon sign was brutal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Saturn in my moon sign was so brutal. I was really glad when that transit was over. But Saturn in my son, I guess because I went through that harder transit, I'm able to now deal better with Saturn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because I'm a Cancer Sun and Cap Moon, it was op opposing my Sun while conjoining my Moon, so so I got like double Your dose. Moon and, baby. Yeah, yeah, and and so I mean, uh, there were definitely really rough parts. I mean, I think a big part of it was that we had child number two as the Saturn in in Capricorn transit began, and um, going from one to two, at least for me, and parents will talk about this differently, obviously, but for me, one to two was kind of like. Um, I thought I was doing all right. <laughs> and then I just got, I just felt like I got sucker punched by the universe. Like, Oh no, like this is way tougher having two. And in some ways it's easier too, because they can play with each other and stuff like that. But I was, you know, I was just stepping into the realities of this lifelong responsibility of being a dad and how little I, I mean, I guess everyone feels this way, but how little I knew about what that was going to be like what a constraint of my life force it would be and things like that. But also strangely um, there's heaven is in a, a mustard seed and that can be a, a Saturnine thing too, with the sun in my experience where the, the, it takes almost like the, the feeling of great constraint around you to be able to get into the, the most granular and essential parts of your life that give you joy and, and getting rid of kind of big clunky things that don't. And, and that was a really big joyful part of the sun, uh, how, how I've conceptualized the Saturn sun part of mine. I love your social media. Can I just say your social media is so great. Like on the one hand, yes, you share about your children and your family and your joys and your life, but then you also share these incredible uh, very inspiring spiritual quotes. And it just reveals so much about the intention that you bring to the sky. Like I like to say that the sky just is, the planets just mm -hmm. are, and that you can't have astrology without the astrologer. Mm -hmm. And so you see how much people reveal of themselves and their worldview and their experiences and how they interpreted their life based on how they interpret the planets. And so you bring such an appreciation of the the spiritual practice that this can be that I absolutely love. I, I love being connected to you on social media. So can you talk a little bit about in the, the time that we have, can you talk a little bit about that journey of bringing you to astrology and this very like mystical spiritual understanding mm -hmm. you have of, of the practice of astrology? Yeah. I mean, the, the, I think probably people who know my work a little bit already will know that I probably spend as much time emphasizing the importance of 
cultivating an inner life alongside of your study or interest in astrology that the two going together and i'm not going to you know offer a prescription for what an inner life practice looks like but because there are so many different paths but i think that when people take the time to commune with their heart and soul every day whether that's through journaling or dance or meditation or prayer or whatever it might be yoga of course for me i'm an initiated monk now <clears throat> in the bhakti yoga tradition. And um, I think that you're, you know, it's that way of being able to see the planets in relation to an inner life. And when you're caring for your, your soul or, you know, your inner self, then all of the planets start to conspire to care for you. And there's a way in which you start to their energies and influences start to help you care for others and care for the space around you. And so I just emphasize that a lot in my work is here's, here's everyday ways of thinking about the transits. Let's have fun with this and let's talk about the archetypes and the timelines and everything like that. But then also let's keep bringing it back to how does this, how does this come in and talk to us when we're taking time out for an inner life every day? And then I think that the, the, to answer your other part of the question, I came to this through, I mean, my path was really sort of circuitous in the sense that I, I was a preacher's kid growing up and um, I, I kind of, my, my journey took me away from the Christian faith, at least on a, on a kind of institutional level and um, started exploring, um, you know, kind of got into some trouble and uh, needed to find my way out. And I, I ended up for about 10 years of my life working really seriously with um plant medicine from the Amazon and uh, called ayahuasca. And those experiences really got me back on a path. Like I, I was a little bit kind of trying to figure out where I was a little bit lost after leaving the Christian church. Cause it was like, that was my whole life. And I needed something a little bit broader, a little bit bigger shelter for my, my mind and my faith and what Christianity was able to offer. And um, initially it was a lot of psychedelic uh, experiences in the Amazon with traditional lineages of shamans and um, those experiences, what they really showed me was um, that there's this mandala of um, patterns and symbols in life that nature is speaking, that we're speaking, that even the clothes that we wear and the food that we eat and just there's patterns everywhere. And that if you can learn to see them, the nice thing about patterns is that they're stabilizing. So there's, you can always ride on the coattails of patterns. If you're riding a bike and you're tipping both ways, then patterns are the things that somehow bring you right back into your center. And the psychedelic experiences really showed me the importance of being able to see and appreciate patterns in myself, in my thinking, in the world. And, and that was really clear, but I, I wasn't really aware of the fact until I started getting more involved in all of this, I was seeing archetypes and that there was a whole language to, to help people not only put those archetypal experiences into symbols, but then that there's this moving mandala in the heavens that you can tap into and take with you like a kind of spiritual GPS. And you can, you can use it for the exact thing that I was sensing that patterns are meant to be used for, which is to help us stay, stay home in the heart and course correct as we teeter around in our everyday life you know yeah and of course with the planets and with astrology it is very i mean i think a part of it is just knowing that even when it's tough it's not going to last like yeah. there's some pattern yes the higher understanding there's some wisdom playing out here that we can tap into it consciously we can shift and change the energy with our own intention and sometimes that intention is simply to surrender. Like when you're having a tough Pluto transit or any outer planet transit, that stuff, you just kind of surrender to it. Okay, universe, what do you want to show me? What do you want to take me? Can be a good strategy. But more than that, I think it's how it is that we start to create this relationship with, mm -hmm. the, with the universe, right? With the planets, mm -hmm. it brings us out of isolation. It's so profoundly healing. Mm, to know yeah. that, that we have this very deep connection. Yeah, that's so true. And, um, and such a good, like just a, a little dovetail back to Saturn um, because Saturn, of course, 
is a planet that can represent solitary um, imprisonment. You know, it's, it's, it was called the joy of the 12th house was called the joy of Saturn associated with things like imprisonment or exile. But then you have, you know, people like um, the, the, um, Dante in his Paradiso, where the seventh realm of heaven is given to Saturn. And that's a place filled with communities of contemplatives, like oh, people who spend their life, whether it's in music or song or scholarship or art, um, you know, contemplating and and somehow um, uh, channeling their love and appreciation for the divine. And um, what I think is very interesting is that there's a way in which um, astrology, like, you know, Ficino said this too, is that astrology sort of, in a sense, is the patron planet, uh, or uh, Saturn is the patron planet of astrology. Um, you can, you know, I think you can make a case for every planet, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, but, I'm just thinking that, yeah, yeah. Right, but in insofar as we, if we were to say, okay, well, if Saturn's the planet of astrology, then what's his, like, make a case for that. So if I were to do that, then I would say that um, for those of us who feel like I'm, I'm in this world, but I'm not entirely of it. So how do I do that? How do, how do I feel like I'm part angel and part celestial traveler and part earthly citizen? And I think that Saturn is the dimmest, distant, most distant planet that sat on the edge between the visible and the invisible is like a particularly good patron saint, you know, pl planet for us astrologers who are trying to figure out that balance. Yeah, and helps us in so many ways, whether it is in terms of bringing greater stability to our own practice so that we don't, so that we're able to make gains and we're able to go deeper with it. Um, but also to use astrology to be better in some way, mm -hmm. to be more aware, to be more ethical, to be um, more knowledgeable, to do better is part of what Saturn asks us to do. And in that way, Saturn can be a part of helping us to fulfill our potential, whether as astrologers or, or otherwise. Yeah, I love, I, and it's, it's like, you're, you're such a good ambassador for the Aquarian Saturn. Cause I feel like that's like that message in particular strikes me as like, because even Saturn itself has this kind of unique, you know, way of expressing itself when it's in its earth sign versus its air sign. And I, I really feel like that sense of Saturn um, in terms of like buckle up your bootstraps and, and get better at being you get better at being human. Let's make this earth a better place. Let's, you know, like that, like that side of Saturn has always struck me, especially because I have my mom, my sister, and my dad are either Aquarian suns or moons. So like my whole family is, is like Aquarian. My grandma, both two of my grandmas were, you know, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. You're familiar with and connected to the Aquarian vibe. Love it. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And so you put out videos like every day at night, like <laughs> astrology on YouTube, right? Mondays through Saturn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Saturn right there, right? Yeah. 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 Mondays through Fridays. And Saturn in my chart is in Libra with Jupiter in the sixth. So I tend to be that like, very disciplined, hardworking, do lots of things, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it tends to be like my MO. I have three planets in my six. Now I have moon, Venus conjunct and Neptune in my six. So well, yeah, it's a different and intention. And yet, you know, with your Libra energy, my Venus energy, we bring love to it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was, was going to say, I was like, I, I, when you said that, I just thought, oh, that must be a much, much more chill vibe to work under. <laughs> It's like, you would think so, but I don't know. <laughs> right on. Yeah, Saturn in my first house. So no, I wouldn't. Oh, okay. Okay. Myself. You've got Saturn in the first. All right. <laughs> well, it gets things done. It gets yeah, no doubt. Done. Yeah, I yeah. don't, yeah. Like I I've looked at the amount of things that you've done and the yeah, I I've jokingly said that you're like the Oprah of astrology. Like, and I maybe I heard someone else say that too, but that's what it feels like to me. Like you're your powerhouse. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. And actually, you know, what's weird is, or maybe synchronistic. I've been hearing that every day for the last few days, like oh, really? here or there or other, somebody is saying to me, you're the Oprah of astrology. And like, <laughs> hey. People have been it's saying that for a long time, but to hear it daily over the last <laughs> actually, 10 days from different people, it's very interesting. I think I should reread her unauthorized biography or something. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, it is that also that Jupiter Mars trine that just passed through, you know, and I feel like there's like I got this I got a letter a couple of days ago from someone and I was like, thank you. That was a really encouraging letter. And I looked and Mars was perfecting its trying to Jupiter. And I was like, oh, it's an encouragement transit, you know, like yeah. just yeah. Yeah, that's so true. I appreciate you so much. I'm looking forward to learning from you once again to everybody out there. Uh, it is a chuta that is part of the Synchronicity University May Speaker Series. And this time we have all these huge stars in astrology, including a chuta. And he's going to be talking about mystical Saturn, just like we talked here. There's going to be even more. And I'm really excited about your upcoming class. Choose Your Tuition Rate is on right now just as low as $5 a class, which is unheard of, as low as $5 a class with Choose Your Tuition Rate. Until the end of April, after that, we go to the regular price of $35 a class. So you can join one class, you can get all classes, uh, and of course, continue to learn from Achuta and to learn from him from his YouTube channel as well, Nightlight Astrology. Thank you, Nadia. Thanks for having me. This was great. I look forward to meeting all of you. Yes, and thank you so much for being here. And thank you so much, everybody out there for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. Enjoy the synchronicity of your life right now. And until we connect again, take care. Bye.